Nobody's listening, right? Hi, Andy. Hello. Uh, is anyone listening? Yes. This one's from, I don't know, because it's just a bunch of random letters, but it's a great review. I'm listening Read again. the letters. S-H-D-H-D-H-A-J-J-D. Shd-H-H-J-A. Maybe it is a cool name that I don't know. Mm-hmm. Apologies if I... um botched that. Go ahead. Borked it. I've seen borked a lot in I headlines lately. Borked. Have you seen it no- lately? No. A lot of things are getting borked out there. Oh, I love it. No, it's not a good thing. Oh, well, I <laughs> You just, like the word. Well, I do and I don't. It actually is too close to porked. Oh, yeah. That's a, from another era. That's from another It's more era. of an 80s term. I porked her, right? Ew. <laughs> very, god. very oh, 80s. Oh, my God. Yes. And also, like, what the fuck does that mean? Have sex. No, I know what it means, but like, how did that become a thing? But we could go down that wormhole with so many words, right? I like, I cowed her. I, what's, I beefed her. Well, that kind of sounds like it too. Okay, carry on. Sorry. <laughs> I beefed her is actually more apt. <laughs> yes, it is. Not if we're talking pork sausages, though. Okay, let's okay. carry on. God. Oh, welcome to <laughs> welcome to the show, anyone who's just newly joining us. This is what you get. Go ahead. Okay. Um, this is a sweet review. <laughs> Started listening after Andy was an, on Armchair Anonymous, RIP Pilot, mm. and have been obsessed ever since. I've listened to all the old episodes and so excited every week when a new one drops. My husband and I have been trying to conceive through IVF and had our embryo transfer two weeks ago. I started to re-listen to all your episodes from the beginning to bring me comfort while finding out if I'm pregnant. In episode 21, O Canada is what it's called, you two are talking about the sim of it all when you started dating, and Elizabeth mentions how she likes to see things as signs. She said, I see a hummingbird, and I'm like, Dad, but that's not really a sign for me. So crazy that Elizabeth mentioned hummingbirds, even though they weren't a sign for her at that point, since she later got a sign from her parents with the hummingbird outside their old home with the brownie incident. Elizabeth, we are definitely living in your simulation. Looks like I will be joining the Patreon to listen to Totally Mommy because I just found out I'm pregnant. Hey, that's amazing. Yeah, I can't recommend this podcast enough. You never fail to bring a smile to my face and lift my mood on my darkest days of dealing with infertility. I love you guys. Please never stop making new episodes. Uh, what an amazing review. You know, it's really interesting. I think when the brownie thing went down and I was like, but birds really aren't, or hummingbirds specifically. And especially because I have friends who hummingbirds are like such an intense sign for them with their uh-huh. deceased parents. Yeah. That I feel like I, I kind of in my mind erased some of the hummingbird thing, but several long time OG listeners yeah. pointed out through the brownie thing that I had said before and you said I did. I think that you've mentioned it before. And um you know what? It turns out if you dive into that Patreon, it seems it's like you there. might have There's mentioned Ed it before. Dance. Yes. It's really funny how we just stay the fucking same because there were also several comments from people about like, you know, I think it was a few episodes ago when I'm lamenting how my career feels a little stalled and mm-hmm. yours is like going gangbusters and that they were listening to back episodes on patreon.com slash nobody's listening, right? Mm-hmm. And there was an episode where my career hadn't even started and yeah. I was like lamenting how frustrating it was and you, I think, were in the like throes of being courted by record labels sure. and publishing companies and so... Point being, uh, you know, and it was very nice saying... You're back to where you started? (laughs) The point being is I've gotten nowhere. No. The point being, I mean, I obviously am in a much different position now Mm career-wise. And the nice person who left this comment pointed out, like, it changed for you then. It'll change for you again. And that's true. But it's just kind of funny that we're like... Yeah. Circling the same airport. (laughs) Sure. Yeah. Any growth for us? I'm not sure. (laughs) 
No. I don't know. That is interesting. I think we've grown in some ways, but yeah, maybe maybe nobody changes. Do you think that? No, I think people can. I think people can. I mean, I saw my dad change quite a bit. Yeah. When my dad, uh, when my mom got yep, sick. When he died. <laughs> when he died, he got so skinny. Um, <laughs> he lost a lot of muscle mass. <sighs> okay. Anyway. Oh, we have fun. Okay. No, when my mom got sick, my dad became very in touch with his emotions in a way that was shocking. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. It was cool. It was very cool to have that with him before he died. Okay. Okay. Um, A little couple (laughs) business things. I forgot to mention last week, speaking of armchair expert, I'm on an episode of Flightless Bird. I know. Oh, my God. And it's like worlds colliding. Yes. Because... The theme of the episode with David Ferrier and Monica Padman, mm-hmm. ah, ah, I, we don't have our button out, um, is... We got to get that out of the bedroom and bring it back to the studio. <laughs> Andy, come on. <laughs> I'm sorry, Monica. Um, is Costco. Yeah. Of all things. There's a Flightless Bird episode all about Costco, and I got to... Um... Indoctrinate. <sighs> So, yeah, David Ferrier to his, I think his Virgin Costco, uh, would it be Voyage? Yeah, Voyage. Yes, I'm tempted to say you popped his cherry, but that actually is a misconception. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. Anyways, I'm, I'm... <laughs> go check that out. Uh, I had so much fun going on that adventure with him. I just want to be friends it's, with that guy. I know. You know what? And you know what he has? I've when his magnetism, name, yeah. Well, when his name comes up, uh-huh. everybody's just like, he's the best guy ever. He's yeah. got that thing yeah. where his name comes up, and if you've crossed paths, yeah, oh, I want that thing. Well, look, that Mo- you're Saint born Monica with. attracts only the best. I mean, mm. listen, they are close friends, so I think if you work things the right way, you might be able to get in there. I'm not even going to pretend that, like. I would be brazen to think that that's a possibility. I mean, I want it. Uh, babe, don't say no to yourself before the universe does. I did have um, <laughs> another uh, New Zealander hit me up when that episode dropped that they saw it. And I just thought it was so cool that there was like this like New Zealand support going on. And they thought I was well, so cool. Well, there are cool. 10 people who live there. So <laughs> <laughs> not to burst your bubble, but like, duh. Other <laughs> other news, uh, Patreon, we got that live stream. Yes, it's coming up Saturday, March 23rd at 4 p.m. Bring your mocktail or cocktail. We're going to have a blast. Are you going to be able to figure out how we can see each other? See, what do you mean? Like, so we can see our patrons almost like a Zoom. Oh, do you not want to do a live stream? Do you want to do a Zoom instead? Yeah. And people can have their cameras off if they don't feel like being seen. But then we can't share it later as a live stream. I think that gets into some, like, unless people know that they're getting in on it. Do you see the difference, sort of? Oh, Is this a private just Zoom thing? Or do we do that next time? Let's do that next time. Okay, so this is a live stream. I'm glad we worked this out on the podcast. That's good. Okay, so if you want to join that live stream, it's going to be a blast. It's at patreon.com slash nobody's listening right Ooh. I also want to thank AG1 for supporting our show this week. If you want to take ownership of your health, try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash NLR. So speaking of cherry popping, cherry popping, first of all. Gross. That was <laughs> gross. <laughs> Okay, thank you to the listener who recommended this book to the nobody um, who said I should read Come As You Are. Oh, yeah. I'm like on chapter four. So I kind of don't want to get too into it because I'm sure I will go on a deep, thorough conversation about it at some point. But it is so fascinating. And it's not, you know, I thought it was going to be a book about like just, I don't know. Here's how to make your sex life better or something. That's cum buckets. You're, I thought that's that's on deck. That's the one. <laughs> well, I'm going to write deck. cum buckets. Oh, okay. Um, but it's not that, although it is that. It's like, 
I don't know why. I don't find this like. I don't find uh, everyone titillating should, at all. Everyone should. It's not about titillating. It's certainly not about making you titillated. It's. Ugh. God. Okay. We're all in Andy's world, but it is so incredible, and it. I have new knowledge about sex and our sexual functions and all of it. And I've only read three chapters. It has blown my mind, like changed my whole perspective on how things work. And I've realized I was really shortchanged. And I know that so many people in our great nation and across the world are to be raised in a kind of puritanical sex is linked to shame, particularly for women like lose lose situation around sex. Yeah. It's really detrimental for women especially, but and men and everyone in between or outside of. It's um and I'm starting to kind of I need to do some work unraveling that for myself. Oh, okay. Yeah. What does that mean for Even me? Even though I'm a little pervy, you know, I think that I'm a little pervy almost because I, um, and I don't mean like, I, I just mean like, I have sometimes offbeat like sexual takes on things. I don't mean you like. You have like weird fetishes and like pleasure points. <laughs> it's, what you, it's what you mean. <laughs> it's weird that when you um, lick my <laughs> second to back right molar, it. <laughs> it's, Teeth licking something for somebody, probably. Every there's a lid to every pot. Yeah, no, I nice. don't mean pervy in a bad way. I, I mean I think I use a lot of sexual humor and stuff, but I also tend to go to sometimes like pervy thoughts when situations arise. Mm -hmm. But I I almost feel like that's kind of a coping mechanism with the situation I was raised in, which was like so I mean, it's scary to think like you're going to go to hell. And also the mixed messages of, and my parents weren't like so Catholic. They weren't even really the ones perpetuating this in, in my mind. Mm -hmm. It was just really the church and stuff. But yeah. it's you're going to go to hell. But also also the subtext of my entire like for girls is where I grew up is like, but make yourself pretty and small because like, being desired and attractive from a really young age yeah. is what is the most important, was what the a, subtext. What a mixed message. Yes. Confusing. I don't like that you're not going on this journey with me. I feel like... No, 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 no. Okay. I actually have something on my notes about penises that I want to talk about. Let's so that's please interesting. please go there. Okay. Oh, well, yeah. I can share this from the yeah, book. Yeah, I don't even know if it's a book about sexual what. You've just said come as you are in case okay, we don't know so, what you're talking well, about. Okay, so, well, it's a book about sexual um, function and how it's linked to our brains. Like, our brain is the most important sexual organ we have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know you love it when I pull out these quotes. Every This is the thing I'm going to say now that you're about to talk about penises. Mm -hmm. Up until six weeks, an embryo has the same parts, Yeah. whether it's XX or XY chromosomes. Okay. And so essentially, you and I have the same parts. It's just because of hormones infiltrating starting at six weeks. Yours developed in a certain way and mine developed in a certain way. Right. And literally, like, a clitoris is the penis. We all know it. We've said it before. I've said it before. Gonads our ovaries. I didn't know this. That I did not know. Gonads are ovaries. ovaries. The so your scrotal sac yeah is our um labia. And you no. you might notice nope. nope, yep, Andy, I think that this person who's <laughs> this is where the you, sac is the labia. The outer skin which is soft and wrinkly and covered with hair and on your on your large scrotal sac there's a line that goes down the middle uh-huh that line in uh quote unquote female embryos is where like the detachment begins and things start going up inside but the scrotal sac is the same as our labia in the balls were are our o ovaries wow right this really ties into what i wanted to talk about 
Great. And not in a way that you're going to be expecting at all. Okay, I can't wait. Okay, we, I feel like in the last week, we were watching a show, and it might have been all on one show, or it was like a couple shows, but there was just like animal humping involved. Can we say the show? Yeah, do, I remember one of them. Was it just Love one? on the Spectrum. Which we, uh, too much to say right now, we love Love on the Spectrum. I want to talk about it. Well, even saying we love it, it's a controversial show. Oh, okay. I don't want to, I have, I want to talk about penises first. <laughs> okay, so we'll circle back <laughs> to that. Go ahead. Okay, so there was like an episode of Love on the Spectrum where there was like some dogs humping, and then I feel like there was something else. In Lions. Di- Lions humping, yeah. It was all on that show. Yeah. Multiple episodes, I think. Okay. It got me thinking that like... Ducks. Were, <laughs> there, were there ducks humping too? Yeah. Great. <laughs> Our sexual organs, when I think about the design, when I think about the gonads, not the best design because you have these things hanging outside of your body. So it got me thinking... And I don't know who designs this. You know, we're, we really flip and flop about religion and God. Did God design each of us? Evolution. Who, evolu- all of this stuff, right? I don't think it. I mean, you and I don't believe in like Adam and Eve showing up in a garden and a, a rib being but, pulled out and stuff like that. But just Do for, we? But, but just for <laughs> the fun of this. Okay, go ahead. I'm like, I was thinking, who has the best design? of reproductive organs of all of the animals. Oh. Like, who has it the best? Because I don't think it's humans. Just because of the balls just seems like an oversight in general. And there's probably other, lots of other things you could point out about what's great. Well, there's great. so many ways to decide what you're quantifying as best. Well, so that was the journey I thought I was going to go down. And I so I Googled... Uh, oh like God. something animal reproductive organs. And the first thing that popped up, I've saved this. I haven't looked at it. I just looked at the headline was. Um, Wait, can we talk about what we think it is first? Yeah, but th- this, it, I got on a little bit of a. Oh, no. What? My link's not working. Oh, God. Andy, <laughs> this, this happens all the time. I literally thought. You just got a text that someone died. I lit... Do you see how you react to things? You have such outsized reactions to things sometimes. This is why our son won't eat strawberries. I know. I feel really fucked up about that. Andy, or for our nobodies, one time there was a moldy strawberry in the, the plastic container of strawberries that Andy was washing... And from the kitchen, I mean, all of us were, like, in the living room or in our bedrooms or something. We all hear Andy go, like, freak out in a way that was so shocking. And we all thought, oh, my God. And we ran to the room. Our son ran uh, over, like, crying already. Yeah. yeah. And then you were like, oh, it was just (laughs) just a moldy strawberry from that. That was probably a year ago. Yeah. Anymore. Our son has not touched a strawberry since, and he never he will again. He never will you again. You scared the fucking I shit out of I ruined strawberries. It's, so, it's such a bummer and also so scary of, like, what other scarring are we doing with our kids in general? If, like, I ruined strawberries with that, uh-oh. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you can't tell him, like, hey, any of this fruit could have been moldy like this, because then, what, he's not going to eat any fruit? Right. Okay, anyway, so I am I started to go down the path of best designed reproductive organs. <laughs> God. Or not, but I... <laughs> did you use a, like, secret browser for that? No, I did not. You should start doing that. <laughs> like, for these things that we're doing in this in the name of research or whatever. Well, this is what I got. The article that I want to um, talk to you about is from the Smithsonian. Okay, but I'm just That's saying... That's good, right? That is good. But what I'm saying is, like, I've watched enough, like murder documentaries and stuff like that that you don't want to be the guy who i i go missing in a suspicious way and they I all, have animal reproductive organs yeah <laughs> like you, do, you don't want to have any red flags like that but i think that i would guess let's say that you did go missing i would guess that like they would even be able to check like my private browser anyways i don't think there's like a real way about that Maybe there is. I'm not a tech guy. I'm not an IT guy. Okay. But anyways, this is from Smithsonian Magazine. 
which I think probably it's pretty very reputable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is nine of the weirdest penises in the animal kingdom. Okay, great. Can we first visit? I, I'm glad that you're excited. I first want to talk about yeah. what you think the best design is. Well, I don't know. I know what some bad ones are. I know that lion seems like a really cruel, horrible design, but okay. maybe a great design for reproducing, but not a... Well, that's what I'm... That's I first first thought was lions. Yeah. I think the male lion might have the best design situation if you're talking about, like... Just getting to use it and reproducing, but it's but it's it, so awful. It's aggressive. There are like barbs that come out. I mean, you've never seen a cat, a female cat, getting fucked and enjoying it. <laughs> I've seen a. I don't lot. know if I've ever seen cats. Have you've sex. heard it? Really? Yeah, and we saw lions. <laughs> We did see lions. Do something. you remember? Yeah, yeah. We were such idiots. Yeah, yeah. So on our honeymoon, we went to South Africa. We went on safari, dream trip, and you know, at that time, it was like we're gonna spend. It felt like we could justify spending the money. Sure. Now I don't think that. What I'm trying to say is, we chose safari because we really wanted to go on a safari, and yeah. it's like this is one trip where we feel like we can spend a good amount of money. Sure. I don't think it was like the most romantic honeymoon. I I don't know if I'd recommend it for a honeymoon, but such a cool trip. Yeah. But we were so young and stupid and making our stupid videos. And and during that trip, we filmed so much footage of lions humping. Mm Mm-hmm. And what did we do? We you edited it to a video. No, no, no. I to never funk music. No, I never did it. We told everybody on the safari we were going to make a video called Lions Funkin. <laughs> so we were the idiots on the safari filming the I'm lions so having sex and then telling the people on the safari with us that we would make a video called Lions Funkin with funk. And we so. thought we were hysterical. Oh god, so so embarrassing. embarrassing. Anyways, but I don't think, but yeah, so that that's that's really all my knowledge. I mean, I know what a few animal penises look like outside of that horse, dog, like that you come around in life. But I don't, that was the thing. I just don't know much about this. Yeah, I don't either. And let's be honest, this really isn't a, a journey I'm really going to go down. But I did do one Google thing. And when I saw Smithsonian, Nine of the Weirdest Penises, I was like, that's that's probably as far as I need to go on this journey. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's do this and then we can close this chapter of Still, our lives. Still, though, if you did go missing <laughs> like tomorrow and this was the one of the last things, that's weird. It is really weird. This is why you need to think about these things. But it's weird. It's not like it's not it's not like case case closed at all. This is a very bizarre detail. Like, and he was looking at the nine weirdest penises. Well, it would certainly send them on a you know, best case scenario is all it does is um, distracts them from actually finding me. You know, those first 48 hours are crucial. I, you don't I want don't, them getting I caught guess. up on this even for two seconds. Oh, so this is a red herring. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't have shit like this on your computer. That's some next level <laughs> shit. If I'm <laughs> Googling weird animal penises. <laughs> Then you got like that's genius level stuff. Because without <laughs> question, if the the detective goes in and is like, he, you know, first of all, it's always the partners. Oh, I just a, just popping in a very sad statistic. Sure. And how fucked up our gun fetish is in this country. I fucking like another state said now you can just carry a gun after eighteen with no checks, no nothing, no training, no nothing out in the open. Okay. Which is like. Can you imagine going to the mall and someone just walking around with a gun on their back? And you're like, also knowing they had to do, they could be anyone anywhere doing anything. Yeah, it's not good. It's so terrifying. And our country is such a cesspool on that topic. Republicans, fuck you for making our children. I mean, it's literally the thing that kills our children the most. Anywho. um, (laughs) But. What does this have to do with animal Three women. A day in our country are murdered by partners or ex partners. Oh, good God! This is that is horrible. So anyway, when I, I, I just want to talk about animal penises. I know. <laughs> just, can we hang get on, to the hang animal on. penises? I know, but I just want to say. So the detective's going to go in and go. 
It's always a partner. We know that. Now I've been I'm suspect doing, number one. I've been doing uh I've been doing a deep dive onto his tech. Didn't come up with a lot except yesterday he Googled weirdest animal penises. And the other the Wait, if you look at my search history for the last two months, it's like all it is is like dorky music tech gear. So they're just like seeing the same thing, <laughs> same thing. And then there's this one day, which happens to be the day before you go missing, <laughs> weird animal penises. Oh, wow. Yeah, that um, is, that is, could not be overlooked. Has to be it like has to be. On, the on the board. board. It's on the board. And there's a red. There's a. <laughs> there's strings. <strength. laughs> there's a red string dangling from it. Yes. With one with one push pin, and they just don't know where the string. <laughs> it's goes. a little post it right that says, "Does it just say weird animal penises?" Question mark or what is that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, number one, the Enchinita. He's like he kind of didn't even know that's an animal. He looks like very much like a little porcupine. Oh, he has four headed penis. Oh, but when he's using Talk it, he's me, daddy. He's only <laughs> using two at a time. Oh, um, why? I don't know. Get I don't all th- four I don't, of those puppies I don't, I don't, cracking. I don't think we need to do a deep dive on each animal. <laughs> Wait, I've never even heard of this animal. Is it small? Yeah, it looks like a little tiny. Um, uh, hedgehog or porcupine. And does it show a picture of the penis? That's that's what I'm wondering because so far it hasn't. So it uses two for fertilization, but those two extra heads aren't just there to show off. Hmm. The next time he mates, he'll alternate alternate which ones he uses. Okay. So he's got like a Tuesday he tires- set and a Wednesday <laughs> set. Okay, great. By shutting down half of their penis at a time, um, Male enchinitas fit perfectly with the females. Oh boy. Here we go. Oh boy. The females two branched reproductive track. Wow. It, uh, there is a lid for every pot. <laughs> there is. It makes sense. Okay. This one is getting handsy with dolphins. Oh, yeah. You know, dolphins have real situations. Okay. They're known for their intelligence, promiscuity, and absurdly dexterous penises. They, this is what I was, when you were saying. They have prehensile penis. I know. When, this is, when you were saying, like, I know what horses look like, I was thinking, I have an image of a, like, slithering, huge penis, but I didn't know what animal it was attached to. It's a dolphin. I've seen that before. Now, not they, in real life. They have to have and a not like <laughs> okay, googling okay, okay. it. Just okay, like okay, un- okay, 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 <laughs> okay. They have to have a prehensile penis to navigate the complex labyrinth-like reproductive tract of the female dolphins. It's like a big eel. Which part? The penis. Yeah, I guess. What's prehensile mean, Andrew? But they. Uh, it can move. It's like a, a prehensile tail is one that can curl around and like grab things. Yeah, like the brain can tell it what to do. They don't just use their penises for baby making either. Bottlenose dolphins frequently copulate for pleasure and often with members of the same sex. Dolphin sex doesn't last long, only about 10 seconds, but males can ejaculate multiple times in an hour. Is it otters? There's some animal that uses a, or maybe it's seals or sea lions. You know a lot so far. <laughs> I came in thinking we'd be on the same page, and you're already like dropping bombs. No, there's some. This is horrible. There's some animal. I think it's like seals or I don't know, but they use dead baby baby otters to masturbate. God damn it! What the fuck? Just stop. <laughs> See, that's something I want to Google. Okay, okay. Don't, don't. <laughs> don't Google that, for fuck's sake. Oh, my God. Okay, 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 okay. Can I get through the list? Don't, you can add to the list, like, we can, you can comment on the list, but don't throw any more road additions to the list. Okay, okay this next one is a flatworm. Oh, <gasps> on guard. This one engages in penis fights, it says. 
Many use their penises for love, but flatworms use them to fight. Worms have penises? Aren't they just penises? Like, (laughs) (laughs) I didn't know. Like, honestly. These are flatworms, though. I don't know what that means. Okay, it's a, you can Google flatworm. It's also two-headed, tiny swords. Their two-headed penis resembles tiny swords, and battles can last up for an hour trying to stab each other. <gasps> Scientists refer to it as traumatic insemination. That does sound traumatic. Okay, next on it is blue whales are the largest creature on the earth, and they certainly have the phallus to match. Blue whale penises range between how big? Ba- how many? How big? Blue whale? Yeah, how big's a blue whale? Oh, is is that the huge one? The biggest whales on Earth. And we're asking how big the penis is? Yeah, and then how m- much weight um, <laughs> the balls are. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to say each penis is like the size of a... It, they only have one. <laughs> okay. Actually, they have two. No, just kidding. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to say it's the size of a Subaru Outback. Ah, I think that's pretty good. Eight to ten feet long. Okay. And then how much do you think um, each testy weighs? Oof, God, this is intense. This is big. <laughs> Huge. Huge. Um, 500 pounds? 150. The blue whale might have the world's largest penis, but size is relative. Barnacles? I didn't know barnacles were animals. Is that right? Barnacles have the biggest penis to body size ratio, with genitalia nearly eight times their body length. Wow. That's crazy. They're stuck in place for life. Yeah, that's why, yeah, barnacles are stuck in place for life. So they use their super long penises to reach other nearby crustaceans, blindly depositing sperm inside their neighbors. Like flatworms, barnacles are hermaphrodites that can fertilize others, be fertilized, or both. They can do it all. (laughs) Hang on, hang on. Oh shit. Wow. What else? Um, hold on. How far how deep into this? We're close. There's only nine. Whoa. Next up is bed bugs. Oh. They're like I don't even (laughs) now I have to think about bed bugs having penises. Well, they're famous for their aggressive stabbing sex. Sometimes overzealous males kill females with their saber-like penises in the process. Ew. Um Uh, The violent process has caused bedbugs to evolve, something very vagina-like where they tend to get stabbed. This special, less armored area of their abdomen (laughs) (laughs) might minimize harm as the males inject his sperm. Okay. Well, uh, duh. Like, this is, it's like the females, interestingly, developed something that would make it so that they're not killed. (sighs) Okay, so I guess the person who wrote this article is referencing like a scientist that's done a lot of um, research on this named Willingham. Not much shocks Willingham about animal penises anymore, but she says, of course, it's a woman. (laughs) (laughs) But she says she was surprised to learn about a microscopic eyeless cave insect which upends how scientists understand sex. Males of the species have a vagina-like pouch containing sperm, while females have a special penis-like organ that penetrates and vacuums up the sperm from the male. It's a sucking situation. Well, you know what? If these scientists read Come As You Are, they wouldn't be so shocked because we all have the same parts. They just work differently yeah this one's a vacuum in this case it's the same yeah exactly big thanks to this week's partner ag1 
I've been walking through this life with AG1 now for about three months and love it. AG1 didn't just replace my old multivitamin, it made it jealous and full of envy because just one scoop of AG1 also includes prebiotics, probiotics, and digestive enzymes for gut support, and all the zinc and vitamin C you need to support your immune system. It couldn't be easier and has become a part of my daily routine. I put one scoop into the sleek AG1 bottle, give it a good shake, and drink it while I'm getting the kids ready for school in the morning. Then I continue the rest of my day with the confidence that I got some good stuff in the gas tank to keep me feeling great. AG1 is a supplement I trust to provide the support my body needs daily, and that's why we are so excited to have them as a new partner. If you want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash NLR. That's drinkag1.com slash NLR. Check it out. Okay, I think this is, um, we're almost at the end. There's something called Chromodorus reticula. It's a type of sea slug. Ugh, all of these dumb ones. I want to know, like, the animals that we know, but go ahead. Okay, this is scary for these guys. Okay. <laughs> sex means saying bye-bye to their penis. Uh Oh. Yeah. Well, uh, sometimes sex doesn't mean saying just bye-bye to Earth. Oh, you die? I think so. That seems bad evolutionary. You wouldn't want to instantly die. It seems like the worst... It's design. like design. Okay. Right? At least you're um, hopefully reproducing, mm -hmm. but you're losing one of them on the team every time. Right. It's risky business. Take one, give one. Sometimes penises pose logistical challenges. That is certainly the case for the leopard sl slug, which is sl so well endowed that it has to go to extreme measures to reproduce. Mating, they dangle from branches by a shared rope of their own slime with their penises hanging below. As hermaphrodites, <laughs> these slugs inseminate each other during sex, so once the action starts, two penises are on display, and their penises are easily spotted because they're electric blue and roughly the size of themselves. You just need to go look that one up, says Willingham. You can see a video. On a private here. browser. That was it. Yeah. Wow. Wow. See, remember when I said too big is bad? Yeah, which For one the of leopards... these was too bad? It just said for the leopard slug, logistical challenges because it's too big. But what they're getting, having sacrificing for too big, they get they get like a, a bonus with electric blue. Yes. That's fucking cool. So I did Google. I did figure <laughs> out a private browser and it almost felt worse using a private browser exactly. to what you're saying. Like, yeah. Then detectives are like, <laughs> she used a private browser, like the only private browser search she's had ever. Mm -hmm. I just do feel like I have to say this and trigger warning. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. It's not funny. It's oh, is horrible. this the otter thing? Yes. This is, come on. I don't, we don't need to do this. <laughs> no, I do because I mislabeled them and I feel bad. Oh, okay. It's actually sea otters. What did you say? I had flipped them. I thought it was seals do this to baby otters. It's sea otters do this to baby seals. And it's horrible. They like, they, um, it's horrible abort. what they do. Abort. <laughs> abort. It's horrible abort. what they do. It's bad. Guess what? Guess what it's you just very... did to yourself. Guess what you just did to yourself. <laughs> very bad. You're the one that's the suspect now. <laughs> this weird penis is, is nothing compared to well... you Google that. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Nature can be very ugly. Very true. Very, very true. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I mean, it's not cool, but it's no, like it's a thing. Not cool at all. Okay, I have something that's going to blow your mind. Thank you so much to the nobody who sent me this information. Okay. Life is wild. Yeah. Remember how I went to a museum with the kids? Yeah. What was that museum called? Norton. Simon. Was that a test? <laughs> no, I'm oh, just okay. like, trying okay, you to came get real quick with the Simon. <laughs> okay, Norton Simon. Now, one thing I want to clarify: is, uh, art historian did reach out and point out that the um, Degas dance, little dancer, or tiny dancer, or whatever yeah, it is, yeah, yeah. petite. Um, there are like seventy of them in the world. So the one that we saw and the alarm went off with is not like the OG. Okay. 
but it's still very cool. But most, I mean, so much of the art there is the OG. One of ones. It's incredible. One of ones. Just not the thinker or the <laughs> little dancer. Yes. Okay. So Norton Simon, guess how he made his money? As a um, vacuum salesman. He at one point was the most wealthy, one of the was, most wealthy men in the world. Oh, okay. Um, he So he started some sort of empire. I'm going to go, he was a... I'm sticking with vacuums. Vacuum, not salesmen, created like a vacuum. Okay, this is going to blow your mind. Okay. Hunts ketchup. <laughs> your face. Are you serious? He owned the Hunts Corporation. Whoa. Isn't that crazy? That's pretty wild. <laughs> How's that going, by the way? It's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. You put work into it, though. I know. Maybe it will happen. I mean, I have footage of me going around <laughs> grocery store with cameras and, like, I, <laughs> setting up cameras on shopping carts to get rolling shots. I've got footage. <laughs> oh if people don't know what we're talking about, I've been talking about wanting to make a mini documentary about Hunts and Heinz ketchup for a year or so. Yeah. Okay, well, isn't but that crazy? Can I t can I tell you something inspiring that I heard speaking of creativity and whatnot? I feel like I'm in a very good place with work and creativity and having like a very healthy relationship with all of it. Mm -hmm. And I've been very um, musically inspired lately, which I kind of dip in and out of, but I'm just working on some things that I'm really excited about. I watched this video the other day. Hold on, let me see if I can find this, because I think you'll love this. It was this artist named Chet Faker, which I'm not... I know who he is, but I'm not that familiar. Mm -hmm. But it was just like some dorky, again, music tech type interview show. But they get to one section uh, in this show where they're like, do you have any advice or has any advice been passed down? And this guy said something that I was like, this is so fucking true. And I just loved it so much. He said... The job is not making the best art you can make. The job is sharing your journey, trying to make the best art you can make, which really resonates. And he was talking about it in a context of like so many people, they get so frustrated. This thing's not as good as I want it to be. I'll never be the best. I'll never X, Y, Z. And he's like, that's not it. The point is trying to make the coolest stuff that you can and showing the world that process and that giving them that stuff. That's really interesting. In some ways that really resonates for me, but in others it really doesn't because there's plenty of incredible art that is so moving and inspiring where you don't know the process. And I feel like we're we're almost a little bit... No, no, no. The process... I mean, I think you're taking process too literally. You're okay. being like process of showing how it was made. No, no, no. No, no, no just know. the thing. Yeah, just just the thing. So you saying like I don't there's that. so much art that you like. Mm -hmm. If that art was never made or put out into the world, it would have ne the process would have never been shown. Does it make sense? Oh, I guess I am thinking too literally. Yeah, I'm yeah. thinking of you like what I'm thinking is that he's saying like go on a podcast and talk about Kind of what I've been doing lately, like, oh, it's been hard, and I've been, da, 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 like, the process of... No, 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 no. Let's use it as a, a painter, for example. If you're a painter, but you're always just, like, consumed with, like, the fear of, like, I'm never going to be that well, good. Well, perfection I'm is never the gonna enemy. I'm never going to be the best. Yeah. And it paralyzes you, mm -hmm. and let's say you don't ever make anything mm -hmm. you're never going to even have the opportunity to share that with the world or become better whereas what he's saying the oh, whole thing is that like no make the thing and show the world you trying to make the best thing that you can i love that i Does also that sense? totally and you saying you are having a healthy relationship with creativity right now which i love and i can see on you yeah i have the healthiest relationship with creativity when it's eyes on your own paper, mm -hmm. you know, trying to compare yourself in something that's objective. And in our industries, in some ways, it's not just it, it can be subjective because 
there are people who make the decisions and say, you get to get paid for this or you sure. don't or whatever yeah, yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah. But not falling trapped to making the thing because you think it's going to be the thing that sells. Mm -hmm. And just making the thing that you feel compelled to make. And, and I mean, I really abide by the kind of Elizabeth Gilbert version of kind of we're conduits for creativity and there's something else that's coming to us and like knocking on our door going hey here's an idea yeah. like can you do this and it's not really you so your ego's taken out of it and so i had this idea recently that i'm not even telling you about yeah. that i'm and i'm like i'm itching to do it because i don't want it to go away I'm like yeah. scared that it's gonna go find another host. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> because I love it so much, but I'm also like, I don't want to fully start it until I can really commit to working on it every single day. And like, <laughs> I know you're thinking <laughs> about why the, not? the Hunts documentary. Is what I'm thinking about. You got to be careful. You got to be careful. You like, got to keep momentum. The Hunts documentary right now is starting to walk away from you, Andy. Yeah, I know. But this Norton Simon thing might be a little like. Hey, I'm it still might, here. Yeah, it might be. But there's a bunch of things in my life that are calling me right now mm -hmm. to do. The other thing, and so I've, I've just been keeping some little notes of just like little inspo. And I don't, I labeled this note that. I should have written down where this came from. But, and this is something I've learned this lesson over the years so many times, but I forget about it. You can control your output. You cannot control the outcome. You can't worry about the outcome so much. Worry about the output, making yes. the thing, being creative, doing the work, putting the work out to the world, worrying less about what's going to happen with it. And we we do that too much sometimes. We get consumed with the what's going to happen with the thing before we even do the thing. Yeah. Well, it is hard. I can't not to... I, I love that, and I think that's absolutely right. You cannot... You have no control over it, so you can't worry about it, but... Um, in my case, like, to put it out to the world, I need the outcome to be a certain way. Meaning yeah. I need a distributor to say, yes, we will pay you to make this. Well, that gets into the whole business of entertainment, which is a whole other thing. Yeah. It's, it is, but it isn't. I mean, yeah. it's it's like, it's tricky. But um, I, of course, Eckhart Tolle. Mm-hmm. Came up just when I needed him. The last month, you know, I actually feel way more optimistic. I feel like the tides are turning and things are starting to percolate in a way that's great. The last, like, two months, I would say, the thing I've struggled the most with is the waiting. Yeah. So pitching and then waiting. And it used to be you'd pitch and you'd find out within 24 hours. And now it's like, I mean, I think I've done 15 pitches in the last. Yeah, yeah. And then you wait. And sometimes it's like for a week and a half. Yeah. And I'm so bad at it. And I, I'm taking this as an opportunity to get better at it. Yeah. And getting better at it means kind of stopping focusing on it, which Eckhart Tolle came up. And it, it was like, anytime you feel like you're just waiting, mm -hmm. treat, like drop into the present moment. And I'm going to fuck this up. I should find what it is. But basically the gist is... Treat every moment like you've chosen it. Mm. So in my case, like, this thing I'm struggling with, which is waiting to hear news that I can't control. Yeah. I have chosen to be here. Like, this is something, and it's, I have, you know. Okay. But also treat it like, if I'm looking at my life, I'm like, I'm choosing this for me to go through right now as a lesson probably and mm. like a, a way when you said i'm having a healthy relationship i'm like and that's fantastic i i think it's easier to have a healthy relationship when things are going amazingly well and like things are falling into place i'm trying to have a really healthy relationship when that's not necessarily the case or i'm like struggling sure and i think um it's been helpful to try to just be in the present moment enjoy the present moment and recognize that whatever I'm dealing with internally is something I've chosen for myself. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Which I like. I like that. I'm just trying right now. I feel like I'm in a great headspace, and I think there's been some nice um, 
Momentum. Momentum. And I'm trying to keep that momentum and not overthink stuff too because I am so guilty of overthinking shit and it keeps me from doing stuff where it's like just head down, Mm -hmm. keep keep making the stuff that you want to be making. Yeah. And that keeps the momentum going and not worrying about shit, if this thing doesn't work out, keep keep going, keep going instead of worrying so much about it not going that you're it keeps you from doing the other stuff. Like I get right. paralyzed sometimes. Yeah. I just overthink stuff where I'm like head down and I think I think I might you get a little more rewarded sort of that way or things just keep the momentum keeps you going forward and opportunities present themselves it seems like. Totally. I'm just trying to have a good attitude about stuff. Yeah, I love it. Me too. Yeah. Let's do it. Wow. Animal penises to that. Weird. Oh, I have good news for you and a beef with you. Do you want the good or the bad? Beef me? Oh, Andy. (laughs) Don't say that right now. Can I just while we're recording? Can our um emoji sex code now be me sending you a hamburger with a question mark? Ew, (laughs) definitely not. (laughs) Definitely not. I didn't even know we had a sex emoji. We don't. That's what I'm saying. Let's not have it be that. Okay. Uh, Cow? No, (laughs) definitely not. We'll find something. Um, What What do I find sexy? Oh, I know what you don't find sexy. Cake. This is the good. Okay, go ahead. I threw out those white packs or briefs. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, that's great. So, yeah, there's a pair of white boxer briefs. Elizabeth did not like them at all. They were, like, getting threadbare, and you could see everything. Like, when you were doing the fire in the fireplace this weekend, (laughs) Teddy and I exchanged a look because you had, like, plumber's crack, but through your underwear. Uh, It's gross. Well, I don't want – yeah, that's not good. So that's the good. My beef with you is the other day I had some meetings and calls or something, and you said to me, are you just rolling calls? (laughs) I find that term so abrasive. (laughs) And I know you're (laughs) Mrs. Hollywood. And you get me and all these big shot Hollywood people <laughs> who are rolling calls all day long. But that's not who you are, okay? We're not rolling calls type people. We're not. No. Even if you're like, okay, this is my hour to make these calls. I'm rolling calls. <laughs> you're just making calls okay. for an hour. Okay, okay. Who'd you get rolling calls from? Is it did it is it rubbed off from somebody? It has. It has. Oh man. I, I can think of a few people actually who have used that term. You know, terms get become kind of like I get it. Yeah. What's it called? Contagious. Absolutely. Where maybe the first time you hear it, you're like, oh. But and then and then and then as time progresses, it kind of like seeps in. But this is why I don't like it on you, okay? Okay. Because I can see other people pulling off rolling calls. I for some I may roll my eyes, for some I may not. You, I know you're the person that the first time you heard it was like, oh, rolling calls. And that makes me dislike it more on you even more. Do you get that? I do. I love this area. What are some other sayings or phrases that are kind of like that? I'm sure I've heard you say something that I'm like, "Sure." oh boy, I can't think of anything right now, but that's really funny. Okay, I hear that, and I'll take it in, and I'll I'll throw out rolling calls the way you, you threw out your white underwear. I mean, it was so disappointing. I remember where I was. You were in the living room. I was in the kitchen, and I wish there was video of how big my eyes rolled when I heard you say that, and I didn't even acknowledge it to you. I just walked out in disappointment. Wait, I think I was thinking of a different time. What did you say? I didn't. You were no. like, are you rolling calls? And I was like, yeah. yeah. Or so, and then I just, I was like off to <laughs> the studio or something. Okay. I was so annoyed. <laughs> okay. That's funny. Thank you for telling me. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So that's my good and my beef with you. It's really all I got. Anything you want to wrap up chatting about? The only thing I do want to say is I'm really admiring 
your outfit today. Oh, yeah. I love you gear. in a cardigan, first of all. I know. I love it too. And I Is that love weird for me to say I love a cardigan. No, if, why would that be weird? Because they're like stereotypically sounds female or something, feminine. No, why would you say that? That's weird. <laughs> Okay. Do you think cardigans are more feminine than male? I don't care the answer. I'm just curious what you think. I do think when you hear cardigan, you're going to think a more feminine situation first. But men definitely, like very manly men, well, murderers think, are wearing cardigans. I, you think, know, it's I like, think cardigan's more of a male, like grandpa thing when I think of it. Okay. Um. Well, <laughs> You know, to each Red start. meat and animal, weird animal <laughs> penises and... Cardigans. And tractors. Okay, so you're wearing our merch. Nobody's listening right from the wonderful Kinship Goods. And Ooh, I have yeah. to say, we have the best merch. Loving it. Alongside a few of our very favorite podcasts who also have this merch. Um, because we followed the deep dive and um, stay at home, Kins. Oh, yeah. Anyway... If you want to get your hands on some of the sweet, sweet merch, go oh, yeah. to our website, nobodyslistening.com, and click the old T-shirt merch button. It's nobodyslisteningright.com, <laughs> and then click the merch button, and then I'll take you to Kinship Goods and woo, get some swag. Yay. Swag. Like, does that rub Sh- wrong swag? for you? No, swag. <laughs> swag does. Swag. If, you, if I heard you say swag. <laughs> okay, swag. I have, speaking of... Um, there's like, you know, there's just like some new artists in my life that Mm -hmm. like I've been texting with and there will be things. I have no idea what they're talking about. I know you have to to look up like that. I just, I just kind of like go past them, but I'm like, ah, I should have asked what what that was. Did you know what TLDR means? I've looked that one up before, but I don't remember. I see it all the time. Too long. Um, and then DR is like. Here are the detail, you know. Like... Look it up, actually, real quick. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was not satisfying. <laughs> what does TLDR mean? Did we talk about the facts? Too long, didn't read. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, there's a, oh, there was another one that was like floating around that I had to look up. I don't know. Did I already tell you Maddie does the fax machine for facts? Facts. Yeah, you do a fax machine emoji. I love it. But that's not correct. But that it's like how people are using it. Fax? Yeah. F-A-X. Yeah. You For... use the fax machine to say fax with a T-S. I don't like that. But Just because like... it sounds the same? Yeah. So are our, 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 like, um, personal trainers sending their clients like, hey, it's time to and then train? That doesn't even, actually. That's, that's fucking great. <laughs> that's not a good example. It's that's kind really of genius. Great. No, but okay. think of any emoji like the like. What's the butt one? The peach mm-hmm. looks like a butt, sort of. I think. I think facts is. I can make that leap easily. I like it. Okay. Is that it rolling seems calls like, for you? Well, it it just seems like a young person who's never experienced a fax machine in their lives, which like, makes it cool. I get. No, but like doesn't even know. I'm concerned that they don't even know that it's not Of course phonetically. They, of course they do. <laughs> okay. You sound so old right now. Well, you know what? I am old. And speaking of TLDR and stuff. What does it mean again? Too, too long, long didn't, didn't read. read. I've been a lot of these that I've been having to look up are in skincare uh, Reddit. I'm I'm now like so deep into skincare Reddit that we'll talk. <laughs> We we'll have to save it because um, it's I'm cons- you know we got into an argument about my skin last night. Yeah, I um, stepped in it. But anyway, long story short is I'm okay with being old. Oh great, me too. Okay, good night. Good night. 